So has scrolling in Vim ever felt too accurate? Did it feel like you're always selecting the correct line and that seems like you're getting way too much work done? Well, have you ever considered trying inertial scrolling? Now, obviously I'm joking, but this is a plugin called ComfortableMotion.Vim, which basically adds physics-based scrolling into Vim. Now, what does physics-based scrolling mean? Well, I'm happy you asked. So if we press Control U, as we can see, we press it once and it scrolls up a bunch of lines. And if we instead press Control D, that will go in the opposite direction. And the longer you actually hold the button, the faster it actually goes. And you can do an even faster scroll by holding down Control F, or you can go in the other direction by holding down Control B. Now, one thing you might notice is there's a slight delay between the first key press and the second key press. Now, this isn't a problem inside of Vim. This is just the way that my system is currently detecting key presses. So there is a way to actually change that delay. I'm not sure how to do so, but if you're getting the same behavior on your system, that isn't a Vim problem. That's a problem outside of Vim. Now, while we're talking about Vim, this plugin does support mouse scrolling as well if your version of Vim does support the mouse and if you're using a terminal that does support mouse input but it's not supported out of the box so you have to go into your config file so let's go into my nvim config and if we go into my init.vim I've got a bunch of settings in here so to enable the mouse support basically what we do is add in these two lines right here so we're doing a no remap on the scroll wheel down and then we're calling comfortable motion hash flick and then we're setting the flick to 40. Now I'll talk a bit more about what this flick value actually means in just a bit, but adding in these two lines will basically make the mouse actually do inertial scrolling. So let's quit out of this and restart it. And as you're gonna see, basically we have inertial scrolling. Now if you're noticing the scrolling is a bit jittery, that isn't a problem with the plugin. That's a problem with this mouse because my scroll wheel is kind of broken. So that's pretty much everything for the general behavior of the application, but there's some things we can do on the configuration side as well. So if I press Control U and Control D, you may notice it's not actually moving my cursor, it's just moving the screen up and down. And the way it's doing that is by in the background, it's running Control E or Control Y. So Control E moves the screen down and Control Y moves the screen up. But you can actually change what key is being used to do this. Now the obvious choice you're gonna go with is going to be with J and K. So if we go and save this, and restart this Vim buffer. So if I press Control U now, as you notice, it's actually moving the cursor this time instead of moving the screen. Obviously, this makes it very difficult to actually land on a line that you wanna use, but it is a choice there that you might wanna do. Now, it's not just limited to up and down actions. You can also put it on something that doesn't really make that much sense. So you could put it on H and also L. So let's try that out and obviously, this is gonna be even worse behavior. So if I press Control U now, as you'll notice, it smooth scrolls across a single line. This is one that I probably wouldn't ever bother touching, but hey, maybe it's something you wanna try. So we'll just comment those out and then move on from that. Now, if you're gonna be changing any of those flick values, I would really recommend disabling the default bindings first, just to make sure you're not getting any weird overlaps and your settings are the ones that are actually gonna be used instead of the default settings. So just go and add this line in right here and that will do that. Now, these lines right here are basically what the default values are actually set at. So Control D is set to flick 100 and Control U is set to flick minus 100, Control F, flick 200, control B, flick minus 200. But these actually overlap with the scroll half page and scroll full page. So if you want to actually retain those bindings, I would recommend moving those onto different keys. For the sake of this video though, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so when it comes to configuring the scrolling parameters of this plugin, we have three values that we can work with. So we have the friction, we have the air drag, and we have the impulse. Now, the air drag and the friction are global values that will affect every single one of your bindings, but the impulse value is this value right here in the bracket. So this value can be set for each individual binding. But this is where the plugin starts to get really weird because I wish I could say this is the exact formula you have to follow to actually calculate how many lines are gonna be scrolled, but I can't tell you that because it's not included in the readme and this plugin is missing a lot of documentation. So so these three examples that we have right here are basically all going to return 25 lines when our impulse value is set to 100, or obviously minus 100, it will return minus 25. So let's try out this first one here. So 
I think that with air drag, what it does is it takes the impulse value and then divides that value by the air drag. So if that's 100 divided by 4, that will give us 25. And if we try to run this over here, we're going to notice that that value does check out as it should. But when we move over to the friction, I have no idea how this value is actually working. So let's try that one out and see what it actually does. And as we're going to notice, it's going to return the exact same number of lines, but I think it does it slightly quicker. So obviously these two values are doing something different. My recommendation though is just use the air drag because I can at least tell you what that does. Because if you then go and combine the two of them, I don't know what value is supposed to be returned by this. The answer is going to be 25, but I don't know how to work out that's what the value is going to be. So if we switch back to the air drag, because I can actually explain how that one works, let's set this to say 40, and obviously set the other direction to be negative 40, and let's try this one out now. So this should return 10 lines if my numbers actually are correct. So control D, and it'll stop on line 10. So that does seem to work as you would expect it to. I don't know what the friction's supposed to do though. So nothing that we've done up until this point has taken into consideration the size of the window. So even if we make this window here half the height and I press Control D, it's going to scroll down the exact same amount. Now, this is probably how I would prefer to use the plugin, but if instead you'd much rather have it based on the height of the window, we can go and get rid of our old bindings here. So these four right here and then switch over to these bindings down the bottom here. So what we're going to do is set a new variable called comfortable motion impulse multiplier, and we're going to set that to one. Now, this value doesn't actually matter. We're basically just using it in the calculation here. This is just something I took from the GitHub page. So basically what we're doing is we're setting the impulse value based on that multiplier times by the window height. So the impulse value will basically be whatever the height of the window actually is. And then multiplying that value by 2 if you want to do a half page scroll, or multiplying it by 4 if you want to do a full page scroll. Now, the problem with this is that if you go and modify the friction or the drag, these won't return the right number of lines. So you have to basically keep it at whatever the default values actually are. But assuming you do that, let's go and see how well it actually functions. Let's go and restart my Vim buffer over here and go back into that one. So if I press Control D, as you're going to notice, it's going to stop basically at this line right here, which is going to be halfway down the screen. As you can see, stops right there. Control D again, stops right here. If I press Control U, my cursor will be in the center of the screen. Control U again, it's going to be at the bottom of the screen. And this value isn't actually being set just at the time of opening up Vim. Every single time you actually press those bindings, it's going to recalculate the value. So if I do Control U now, as you're gonna see, if I press Control D, that cursor has been placed in the middle of the screen. So when I scrolled up, it scrolled halfway up the screen and then scrolled down, it scrolled halfway down the screen. Now moving on to the issues. So the biggest problem this plugin has is the lack of documentation. That is basically what kills this plugin for me. Now, I wasn't gonna be using it myself, but if someone asked, hey, I want inertial scrolling in Vim, can I do that? If this plugin had documentation, maybe I'd recommend it to people, but I, I can't do that. Unless you're gonna spend hours trying to work out what each of these variables actually do, I can't really say anyone should actually use this. At a bare, bare minimum, what it needs is the formula in the readme. I would also like, you know, explanations of what the friction value and what the air drag value actually do, but at least have the formula there if nothing else. But honestly, I would probably rewrite this plugin from the ground up because having friction and air drag there aren't really the most intuitive ways for most people to work. I would recommend having a number of lines to scroll as a value, have an acceleration, and have a top speed. Even without documentation, most people can probably wrap their heads around what those values actually do. So in its current state, I think this is a really cool experiment, but an absolutely horrendous plugin that is a massive, massive pain to configure. It could be really cool. I wouldn't use it. It could be cool though. And inertial scrolling kind of does make sense on a mouse wheel where you actually have something that is analog and obviously some of them actually even have some form of like, you know, infinite scrolling that has inertia to it. But I don't really think it really translates properly to a binary action. Maybe someone could get used to it, but I feel like even if it's just for the mouse scrolling, 
if it was easy to configure, maybe this would actually be cool. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Yoakim, Corbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan, Monster, Chuka Bento, Joseph Pinity, Road, Tony Brennan, Donald John, Marek Mikkel, Nate Dog Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there's links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and Bitch, and other places like that, if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.